Welcome to Concept 2 Notes, all about concentrations of solutions. Now, you might have been thinking after Concept 1, like, oh yeah, maybe we finally have a chemistry unit where we're not going to have to do math. And that's not the case. Here is all the math. We are going to hit all the different math that you're going to need to do for me in my class. In this concept, it's really not that bad, though, I promise. For my students, we're really going to only talk about three equations. There's a few more um, if you have a different teacher that your teacher might add in here. But we're going to learn about concentrations of solutions and kind of quantify solutions that way. Now, before we get into it, as always, y'all know I love an inquiry lab activity. So we're going to do one about this that hopefully will make this a lot more fun and make a lot more sense and give a lot of context to the math. But let's just dive into the notes. So a little overview, as I like to do, solutions can be described as concentrated or dilute. So we've already talked about different types of solutions, and you can say they're saturated or unsaturated, or you can talk about how they have an ionic substance that dissolves in them versus a covalent, but you can also describe them as concentrated or dilute. And so in this picture, just looking at it and looking at the ratio of solute to solvent, we would say that this is more concentrated and this is dilute. And so what I mean by concentrated or concentration is it's just a measure of the amount of solute in a given amount of solvent or solution. And so this can be expressed mathematically different ways. We can describe it with a molarity, a capital M. You, if you've ever been in the chemical supply closet, you may have seen you know, different things labeled as 2 big M or 3.5 big M uh, molar, you know. Um, we can also describe them in terms of molality, which is represented by a little m. Now, there are other ways that concentration can be expressed. We can do percent composition by mass. That's something um, that we did in Unit 4 Chemical Bonds. You can do it by volume, using volume of the solute and the volume of the solution and comparing those. It's like the same kind of mathematical process that we did then. You can also do something called a mole fraction, looking at the moles of solute and the moles of solvent, which is really similar to things we did um, in Unit 6 Stoichiometry. But again, just for the sake of time, I'm going to only teach you two brand new ones here, which are molar molarity and molality. Um, one other thing I want to tell you is that square brackets can be used to abbreviate concentration if you want to, um, you know, use those moving forward in terms of talking about the concentration of something or to like simplify your notes. So I just wanted to tell you that as well. In class, I'll draw these on the board so you can see them. I always love a good abbreviation. That's why I wanted to tell you that. Okay. So let's talk about molarity. So we're going to learn about molarity, how to calculate it, molality, how to calculate it, and then we're going to talk about dilutions at the very end of this. So molarity, like I said, capital M, is the concentration of a solution expressed in the number of moles of solute per liter of solution. So that equation is moles of solute divided by liters of solution. So in terms of the unit, you can express it just as like a capital M, or you can do a mole per liter. Both of those are fine. Um, we're just going to do an example to like learn this because again, this is one of those like we're just going to do it. We'll practice it. It'll make sense. We'll do practice problems, all that jazz. Okay, so how much sodium chloride in grams would be needed to produce one liter of a 0 0.250 molar solution? Okay, so this is a simple equation. So we're not going to start by calculating molarity. We're going to start by finding moles. But what I really said is, I guess we want to find grams. So to find grams, we're going to have to find moles. So I want to point this out really quick because that may have sounded confusing, is that this equation uses moles. But if you're practically making a solution in lab, you're not measuring out moles, you're measuring out grams. So we're going to bring back finding molar mass, converting between grams and moles, moles and grams, using molar mass. We're going to have to be doing that because practically speaking in lab, you're going to need grams, even though in the equation, you're going to need moles. So we're going to practice going back and forth through those again. This should be really familiar to you though. Okay, so let's use radar. If you're in my class, you know I love radar. We've already read the problem. Okay, so let's analyze what do we know, what do we not know. We know we have one liter of solution. We know that that solution has a 0 0.250 molar concentration. What do we want to know? We want to know the grams of solute. Okay, but looking at our equation, we can't get there. But we have this and this. 
So we can find the moles of solute. And then to get from moles to grams, we're going to need our molar mass, our grams to moles. So we're going to need the molar mass of sodium chloride, NaCl. Okay, now we've diagnosed kind of what we have. We've analyzed what we have. We've diagnosed where we're going. We're going to use this equation eventually. Now let's start to kind of like assess the situation here. So start with, you can start kind of several places. I'm just going to go ahead and start with, let's find the molar mass of sodium chloride. Let's review that. So we look up on the periodic table. We have one sodium. If you look on the periodic table, the atom, an atom of the element sodium has a molar mass of 22.99. Now look up chlorine. We have one of those. That's 35.45. So to find the total molar mass, we're just going to add those together. And we get that sodium chloride has a molar mass of 58.44 grams per mole. Okay, now we're going to take this. I'm running out of room here. So I'm going to open a new slide, but I'm going to just move this over here into what we already know section. Okay, so now new slide. I just replace that here. Now we have some background information that we can really get started. Okay, so diagnose. What's our equation? Molarity equals moles over liter. Now I want to solve for moles though. So y'all know I like to rearrange before I actually plug in and solve. So Current, I want to get moles by itself. To get it by itself, I need to get rid of what's with it. Currently, it's being divided by liters of solution. So if I want to get rid of something, I need to do the opposite of what's being done to it. So instead of dividing by liters, I need to multiply by liters. And I have to do that on both sides so that I'm not changing the equation. When I do this, that makes those liters cancel out. I'm left with just moles equals M times L, molarity times liter. So that's easy. Now I can just plug in using what I know. Okay, so I'm going to do my molarity, which is 0 0.250 times my liters, which is one liter of solution. And I get that there are 0 0.250 moles. So again, I'm moving this over here just because, again, I'm running out of room. Now, remember, though, what did they ask us for? I now know the moles of solute, 0 0.250, but I want the grams. So we're going to have to do a unit conversion. So I draw my picket fence. Now, we already know 58.44 grams in every one mole. And you just need to make sure you set it up on the right side. We always want units to be like units to be opposite of each other so we can cancel them out. So I put one mole on the bottom, 58.44 grams on the top. That will make those cancel out. And now I can just multiply across the top, multiply across the bottom, and divide. So I do 0 0.250 times 58.44 would be divided by 1, and I get 14.6 grams of sodium chloride. That is how much I would need to make 1 liter of a 0 0.250 molar solution. Okay, so again, the last step of radar is to reflect and see, like, does this make sense? You can go backwards, like work this equation backwards to make sure you got a reasonable value here. Now... One thing I want to note, practically speaking, when you're in lab, when you're making a solution, you always dissolve the moles or the grams of solute in some solvent, then you fill to the total volume, okay? So this isn't as simple as, I'm not taking 14.6 grams of sodium chloride, one liter of water, mixing them, I get 0.25 molar, okay? I'm taking 14.6 grams of sodium chloride, I would add a little bit of water and mix it so it starts dissolving, and then I would fill until the volume total is one liter. Because think about it, that 14.6 grams of sodium chloride is going to take up some space. This is the liter of the total solution, not just the solvent. So I want to make sure that's clear, and that's an important distinction, so write that down. Okay, now I want you to try these. They, you know, build and challenge. Um, you're going to find molarity, whoops, um, find grams like we just did, um, find volume. So you're just practicing all the different derivations of this equation that you could see, and we'll go over this in class. Okay, now let's talk about molality. Same type of thing, just a little bit different equation. Molality is another way we can express concentration, and it's just the moles of solute per kilogram of solvent. Okay, so we're doing moles to a mass here. So it's a slightly different equation. It's moles of solute over kilograms of solvent. Okay. Example, find the molality of a solution made of 16.7 grams of glucose and 125 grams of water. Okay, we read it. Now let's, you know, analyze. What do we know? We know we have 16.7 grams of glucose. That would be my solute. So in this equation, I'm probably going to have to get that to moles. We'll get there in a second. We know we have 125 grams of water. That's going to be my solvent. I need to get that in kilograms. I want to know the molality. 
All right, well, to find molality, I need moles of solute. I've got grams of solute, so I'm going to have to get the moles of solute. I'm going to need the molar mass to do that. And then I need to find the molality. I need to know the kilograms of solvent. Well, I have the grams of solvent, so I just need to convert that to kilograms. Okay, so a couple, again, there's a couple like small steps, but it's not, you know, a crazy equation. All right, let's make some room here. So let's just start working on this background info that we need to get to the actually solve molality. All right, we need the molar mass of glucose. So I have six carbons. Each carbon atom has a molar mass of 12.01. I looked that up on the periodic table. Okay, plus I have 12 hydrogens multiplied by 1.008. That's the molar mass of one atom of hydrogen. And then I have six plus six oxygens, which each have a molar mass of 16.00. So I'm multiplying, multiply, multiply, and then add up those sums. And you get a molar mass of 180.16 grams per mole. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead because I have a little bit of room left on this slide. I'm going to go ahead and convert my 16.7 grams of glucose using molar mass into moles. So that way I at least have one thing that's going in this equation. Okay, so 16.7 grams, make my picket fence. Now, like units need to be opposite. So the 180.16 grams is now going to go in the denominator in the bottom. One mole goes in the top. That allows the grams to cancel out. So that way when I multiply across the top and the bottom and divide, I'm going to end up with only moles. So 16.7 times 1 is 1 divided by 180.16 and you get 0 0.0927 moles of glucose. Okay, now we have our moles of solute. So now I'm going to change slides because I'm out of room. I'm going to put this over here. Okay, so I now, we had the molar mass. We've got the moles of solute. Now I still need the kilograms of solvent in order to solve for molarity, molality. Excuse me. So we're going to have to do another conversion. If you look at your reference sheet for this unit in my class, there's some things on there that are to help you. You'll see these equations for molarity and molality. You'll also see I put the unit conversion factor for grams to kilograms and liters to milliliters because those are things you're going to see several times in this unit. So a hundred, uh, there are a thousand grams are is equal to one kilogram, just like a thousand milliliters equal to one liter. So I put those there so that we can apply them. So just going to do another conversion here. I've got 125 grams of water. I know that there are 1,000 grams in one kilogram. I put these units opposite so that they'll cancel out. Now I multiply across the top and divide, and you get 0 0.125 kilograms of water. Okay, so I now know my moles of solute, my kilograms of solvent. Now I just plug and chug, okay? Diagnose. Mol molality equals moles over kilograms. So that's 0 0.0927 over 0 0.125. I divide and I get a molality of 0.742 moles per, per kilogram. You could also just write this as 0.742 lowercase m. I'm fine with you doing it either way, okay? All right, now I want you to practice, again, some more derivations of these, and we'll go over. One last type of math we're going to learn before we'll really just unleash and do more and more practice is dilutions. So diluting a solution will make it less concentrated. So if you have something that's too strong, too concentrated, we will dilute it to lower the concentration. And there's two ways you can dilute something. You can remove solute so that there's a greater ratio of solvent to solute, or you can add more solvent. Those are your two options. Now, let's think about it practically. Do you think it's easier to remove solute or just add more solvent? Probably add more solvent. So that's what we're going to be doing here. And so our equation for dilutions is M1 times V1 equals M2 times V2. So M1 is whatever your original molarity is. So that's in moles per liter. V1 is your original volume. It needs to be in liters since our molarity is in liters. Okay, and then M2 is whatever your new desired molarity is in moles per liter. And then V2 is your desired volume. Again, it has to be in liters because of this equation. So basically to do a dilution, you're going to have three of these and you're going to be solving for one of these. That's it. I promise it's not crazy. Okay, let's do an example. I'm starting on a fresh page, fresh slides. So I don't have to keep changing it up on you guys. All right. Consider a 0 0.15 molar sodium hydroxide solution. If you have 125 milliliters of it and you add an additional 50 milliliters to it, what will be the what will the molarity of the new solution be? Okay, so don't panic. 
Let's do radar. What do we know? What do we not know? Anytime you're seeing multiple volumes, you know, multiple like molarities and stuff, you know you're doing a dilution. You know you're using this. Okay, so which one of these do we know? Well, we know the original molarity. We have a solution that has a 0.15 molar concentration. Okay, we also know the original volume. We know V1. It's, we have 125 milliliters of it. Okay, now, just for the sake of speed, I'm going to go ahead and convert this to liters because I don't want I, that's, I want you to almost do it immediately because you know it has to be in liters. I don't want you to forget. So I could do a picket fence here, put 1,000 milliliters over one liter. I'm just going to do it in my head for the sake of time. So 125 divided by 1,000, you get 0.125 liters. Okay, I'm just writing it there so I already have it. Now let's talk about volume two. We do know volume two. It says if you have 125 and you add an additional 50 milliliters to it, that's your new volume. Okay, we've added more solvent. We said that's one way you can dilute. So what's 125 plus 50? Well, that's 175 milliliters, but I need it in liters. So divided by 1,000, I get, okay, 0.175 liters, okay? Now I need to know what's the new molarity because I added all that extra solvent to it. Okay, what's the new molarity? So let's figure that out. M1V1 equals M2V2. I want to get M2 by itself, so I'm going to divide both sides by V2. That will make those cancel out. I get M2 equals M1V1 over V2. And now I just get to plug in and solve. So my M, this is where it helps so much, you guys, to have it all labeled over here because it's super easy when you start plugging these in to plug them in the wrong spots. Okay, so M1 is 0.15. So that goes up here times V1, which is 0.125. That goes up here. Divided by V2, which is 0.175 liters. I multiply across the top and divide, and you should get 0.107 molar. All right, now reflect. Does this make sense? You added more water, and the concentration went down. Yes, that makes more sense. If I start with a higher concentration, I add water. That's going to dilute it. I should have a lower concentration in the end. Okay, that's what we mean by radar and reflecting at the end to make sure it makes sense. Okay, the other thing you can always do to check is go back to the original equation, plug in your M1 times your V1, and see if it's the same as multiplying your M2 you just found times your V2. Okay, that's another way you can double check. All right, here's some more practice problems we'll go over in class, and then we will do a whole practice worksheet about concentrations.